By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm bringing you magic from the Raging Dwarf. And this is an alpha beta one day tournament, just a small little event that Richard organized. And Richard is better known as old school MTG underscore NL on Instagram. And in his first match, we are going to see a player from France, Rudolphe, playing against a player from Belgium, Simon. Now, uh, Rudolphe is playing with black, with a lot of splashes, with power cards. And Simon is playing with a dead guy, Ale Brew. Now, before I go, to the deck techs, I would just like to point out that you can also go straight to the games. Check the description below and there you will find a timestamp that reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will bring you straight to the games. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech of these beautiful alpha beta decks. And we're going to start with the deck of the player on the left, Rudolfe. And here we see the deck of the first player, the player on the left, the Frenchman. And look at this deck. It is a thing of beauty. On the left side, we see all those black cards in this deck. And then in that middle pile, we see some of the most powerful cards in the game of old school. And I mean, this deck, this deck is packing a lot of firepower. Let's first take a look at the black cards because there's one card that I really want to point out and that I'm really looking forward to. The Demonic Hordes, three black and three to cast for a 5-5 five, five Summon Demons. And it's such an epic piece of art by Jesper Mirforce. The card is just beautiful. Uh, for the people that don't know what it does, you can tap to destroy one land. It's as simple as that. And of course, it's a 5-5 five, five, for six, which is actually pretty good in old school. Uh, the thing is, it's a demon, so it comes with the cost. You need to pay three black during your upkeep. If you can't, the hordes become stabbed and you lose a land of the opponent's choice. So you can't even choose a land to sack. No, your opponent gets to choose a land. So these demonic hordes really want you to pay those three black during the upkeep. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, we see some classical combos, Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre is one, of course. And we also see Royal Assassin and Icy Manipulator. That is, I personally really like that because it's such a beautiful old school combo. So I'm looking forward to seeing that as well on the table. And, you know, I do think that his opponent, Simon, really needs to be uh, wary of this. You know, once he sees an Icy Manipulator, he needs to think, okay, what can I do against this? Because a Royal is coming. And especially when a Royal is on the board, don't be, you know, um, don't be taking it easy. Maybe because he's playing a Dead Guy Ale deck, maybe that player will think, hey, I've got a Sarah Angel in the deck. I will just let the Royal Assassin be. That is very risky when you're playing against this specific brew. I mean, those Icy Manipulators with the Royal, they can make a deadly killing machine. Then the rest of the deck, we just see, you know, the blue power cards. We see that beautiful Wheel of Fortune. We see a regrowth. We see a balance. So there is a lot of firepower in this deck. And if you look at the sideboard, I'm staring at those four glooms. Those four glooms, they can be game changers for game number th uh, two and game number three. For me, this deck, I think, I think it's the favorite. Of course, we first have to look at the deck of Simon, but this looks like a really tough, tough, Cookie to crack, you know, this is just a really strong, exceptionally strong deck in this alpha beta format. Let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Simon. And here we see the deck of Simon, the player on the right from Belgium. And he's playing with what we call a dead guy ill deck. And that refers to the colors white and black. And uh, the first thing that I notice is that Simon is also playing with that dark ritual hypnotic specter combination. But this deck, actually, I'm seeing some really cool things happening. Now, first off, when you're playing black and white, it means you have a lot of cheap spells, efficient spells, and creature removal. And we see all that in this deck. We see Terrors. We see uh, Swords to Plowsiers. We see Disenchants as well. So he's got all that packing for him. Of course, he's got a balance in there as well. But what I personally like most about this deck is the Wrath of God. Wrath of God, of course, a beautiful card. Two white and two sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. That used to be called buried. So all the creatures are buried. And then there's a card, Anime Dead. Beautiful, beautiful art. Anime Dead, one black and one. And you can choose a creature from any graveyard. It doesn't have to be your own. Any graveyard. And you can put it under, into play under your control. It does get minus all, minus zero. But that means he can play Wrath of God, destroy the strongest creatures of his opponent, play an Anime Dead, and say, okay, now that is mine, and I'm going to kill you with your own creature. Those are the things, those are the things in old school that I like to see. Another really cool card in this deck, also kind of an oddball, 
is Jade Statue. Now, Jade Statue is an artifact for four, and you can pay two during combat, and then it turns into a 3-6 golem creature until the end of the combat. You know, I don't know how you call it, but until the end of combat, it turns into a 3-6. That means that what you can do, you can play Wrath of God, destroy all the creatures, then turn your Jade Statue into a creature and attack your opponent for three. So Jade Statue, Wrath of God is a really good combination. Wrath of God, Anime Dead is a really good combination. Another thing that I notice here is that Simon is also playing with IC Manipulator, but he's only playing with one IC Manipulator. When I look at a deck, I tend to say that the deck with the most IC Manipulators wins. It's just because it is one of my personal favorite cards because it, it's, it, it offers you so much flexibility. Um, but who knows? He also has one there in the sideboard. Another interesting thing here about Simon's deck is that he's playing with white, so that means he has access to circles of protection, and I think that could be pretty decisive in that second game where he will board in his COP black, I assume, but then again, um, his opponent has glooms, so it could kind of be a gloom COP battle that's very alpha beta as well, so we're just going to have to see how that will end up. This is the deck of Simon. We've seen it. We've seen both decks. For me, Rodolfe is a slight favorite just because of all that power that he's packing. But this deck of Simon, I mean, it can definitely beat him. I would say 60-40. Let's go to the games and, uh, and find out. Let's go. Game number one. And we've got uh, Rodolfo, Rodolfe, sorry, on the left. And we've got Simon on the right. Simon on the play here, starting with a Scrubland. And look at his beautiful play mat. It's just, uh, wow, it's stunning. And I do know it is custom made. Oh, look at that opening by his opponent here. Dark Ritual into Soul Ring and a Black Knight. Wow. This is pretty powerful stuff. And that's instant trouble for Simon here. And actually, I didn't think about Black Knight at all, but Black Knight can be a huge problem for Simon. Why? It's protection from white. You cannot play a Swords to Plowseers. And two, you cannot play a Terror on it, another card that Simon plays main, because it's black. So that means that Simon will have to wait until he draws into a Wrath of God. So Wrath of God says, bury all creatures, right? So that is a way to get rid of uh, of the Black Knight. Of course, he can also tap it down with his one Icy Manipulator that he plays main, but I mean, this could be a problem here, and we can already see Simon here dropping down to 18. Look at this, a Time Twister. And we do see Simon tapping down his mana here. What is he gonna do? Oh, there's a Disenchant, probably on the Soul Ring. But what a great opener for uh, Rodolfe here. First starting with that turn one um, Dark Ritual into Black Knight and Soul Ring, and then following it up turn two with a Time Twister. Now at least Simon got a chance to disenchant that Soul Ring. Maybe that is going to slow his opponent down a little bit. And of course he also uh, got to drop a card. But it is a very strong start here by his opponent and... Uh, He's on 18 still. And they're gonna draw a new seven. And this is going to be very interesting. Already it's a very interesting game. Both players a full grip of cards again. There's the pass turn, untapping here from Simon, drawing card for turn. What can the Belgian player do here? There is another Scrubland tapping three. There is his Hypnotic Spectre. That is pretty dangerous. Maybe it can start discarding that hand size a little bit. But remember, Rod uh, Rodolfe has a full grip of cards as well, so I'm sure there's an answer in there. Maybe he's just going to play his own Hippie. Block a Hippie with a Hippie. It's a solution. There is a Tropical Island. There is an attack. Probably going to take the damage here. Black Knight having first strike doesn't seem like a profitable block here. Wow, another blue power card. Time walk this time. And this is really a strong opening here. Rodolfe finding all the cards that he needs, taking on the extra turn, and then he can attack again with the 2 2. That means Simon's most likely going to drop to 14 here. There we see a Batlands first. Tapping three here. 
Probably two black and one for Hippie. Exactly. Hypnotic Spectre. Two, two flyer. That can block the Hypnotic Spectre of his opponent. And he's dropping to 14 here, taking his turn, untapping. There's just a lot of pressure. He's already on 14. Tapping four. Will we see an Icy here? There's an Icy Manipulator. The problem, of course, for Simon is he cannot use it yet. He has to wait a whole turn, but then he can start tapping down the Black Knight. And one of the things that uh, Rodolfo's, uh, Rodolfo's deck is struggling with is finding an answer to artifacts. At least that's something here. We see the uh, block with the Hypnotic Spectre. So both Spectres are gone. I think that's a good block from Simon. Uh, he's now on 12. And that Black Knight has done so much work. Already taken 8 damage from Simon's life total. There's a Jam Day Tome. That can start being useful for the Frenchman. And will we see a Disenchant playing 3 main, I believe. There we go. Disenchant on the book. That is very important because now we see Simon kind of having regained, well, not regained control, but kind of having control for the first time in this match. He can tap down the Black Knight with the Icy, preventing the damage. And now he just has to keep his fingers crossed that Rodolfe is not going to do anything spectacular here in his turn. Playing land number six and he just passes. So this is really good news for Simon. Is this going to be the change in this matchup, the flip in this matchup, there's a jam day tome for him. And remember what I said, Rodolfe doesn't have a lot against artifacts. There's of course the tap down, they, they tr he's trying to attack, Simon tapping it down of course with the icy manipulator. There is a royal assassin. And again, the royal assassin doesn't look like a problem right now, but remember he is playing with three icy manipulators main. If he can find one, he can start tapping down creatures but, well, I guess Simon has to have creatures first, right? Because there are no creatures on the board. They're finding another swamp. So both players have a lot of lands. That's not an issue. And one of the things that Simon can do here, I guess he's choosing not to. One of the things that he could do was just say, you know what, I'm going to pass turn. I'm going to draw some extra cards trying to find a Wrath of God to make a good trade here. Uh, I guess he doesn't want to take that single damage from the Royal, so at least with the Hypnotic Spectre he can um, block the Royal Assassin. And now we're going to see, can Rodolfe find, Rodolfe find an Icy Manipulator here? Trying to attack first with the Black Knight. Black Knight's getting tapped, of course, by the Icy Manipulator. And let's take a look. What is he going to do next? Tapping three, another Royal Assassin. So that's not really a problem now for Simon. He's probably not too concerned about this now. I'm still hoping that we get to see the Demonic Hordes, by the way. Simon drawing his cards. Tapping, drawing an extra one. Going to four. Having three mana open so he could play a two drop or a three drop. And it looks like he's not really doing... Okay, playing a Swamp. Four mana open right now. A Plains, a Swamp, and two Scrublands. And he chooses to pass turn, it seems. We're just going to wait... Maybe the players are trying to figure something out here. And he's passing turn. Okay, there we see an untap. So Simon did, couldn't do too much. Again, the tap with the IC manipulator. Tapping four. Are we going to see an IC on the side? Yes, there is the IC manipulator. And this is a big problem for Simon because that IC in combination with Royal, it can kill the Hypnotic Spectre. And it can kill every other creature that Simon is going to dedicate to the board. So he first needs to fix the board state before he can start playing out more creatures. And that, of course, is a problem. It's also interesting now that both players have an Icy Manipulator. You can get these crazy Icy Manipulator battles. First we see an attack. There's a kill by a Royal Assassin. Simon's probably thinking he's going to tap him anyway. I might as well attack. And 
there we see another land tapping two here for a disenchant on the icy manipulator and that of course is what makes white such a strong color the disenchants and the swords and we've already seen yeah, he's probably going to tap down the icy here so he can deal two extra damage that's a very good play solid play here we're probably going to see oh first drawing a card and it's really it's really interesting because now simon has an icy manipulator and a jam they told him. uh rodolfe actually had the same but simon's got disenchant in his deck disenchant is just ridiculously strong in old school magic and there is a bat moon he can swing in for how much is that seven seven damage is he gonna drop to five here oh my goodness that bat moon is doing work swords to plowsiers on one of the royals of course he cannot target the black knight because it's black knight has protection from white i mean that black knight has dealt so much damage look at the life totals of simon seven he's on seven that means he's taken 13 damage so far and 11 damage comes from that one black knight that has been on the table since turn one that's really the mvp of this match and i i mean i hope for simon that he can find a wrath of god because even with the current board state, yes, he can tap down the Black Knight, but then still the Royal Assassin is coming through for two damage because of that Batmoon. Okay, here we see Hypnotic Spectre. That's something. That's a 3-3 blocker because it also benefits from the Batmoon, of course. So it can block the Royal Assassin. Animate that. Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. He's working on his army. An interesting choice here, by the way, of choosing an Animate that over drawing an extra card with the Jam Day Tome. There are, there are reasons to do it. I mean, there, there's something to say for both options, but I think I personally would have waited just to keep just to keep a mana open. On the other hand, he has to use his Icy Manipulator, of course, so then he doesn't have four mana anymore to draw a card. Okay, and that, well, he wouldn't... Okay, yeah, I, I think I wouldn't have played Anime Dead, I think. But, of course, I don't know what's in his hand. And there is an Icy Manipulator on the side of his opponent. I kind of missed that. I was trying to figure out in my head what logic, what play steps I would have taken. But wow, this IC is huge. It means he can start killing uh, the Hypnotic Spectre. So he's starting with the first Hypnotic Spectre. The 3-3 three, three is dead now. Probably we're going to see Simon attack here. At least get to discard one of the cards of his opponent. But it's not looking great for him. There we see two cards in hand. So one is a goner. Looks like a dark ritual. Kind of hard to see with the resolution. Drawing an extra card with the Jam Day Tome. I mean, he's already played two disenchants. He's only playing three mains. So it's going to be hard to find a disenchant for that remaining Icy Manipulator. I guess he's kind of hoping to find a Wrath of God to kind of clear the board. Even if he does, it's still not ideal because the Icy Manipulator and Bad Moon, especially the Icy, are just so strong here in this situation. And tapping down the Icy of Rodolfe. Oh no, tapping down the Black Knight, of course, trying to prevent the damage. Interesting, he's going to attack with the Royal Assassin, putting him on 5. So he's going to attack instead of killing the Hypnotic Spectre. And then he's going to play a Sengir Vampire. And remember, that Sengir Vampire is a 5-5 flyer because of the Batmoon. Okay, and I guess there is there is a difference here, which he was using the Royal Assassin on the Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, so Hypnotic Spectre is dead, and then he played the Sanger Vampire. That does mean that Simon is still on 7. He needs to find a Wrath of God, or this game is over, and this game is over. Okay, wow. <laughs> There was just too much pressure from this uh, from this black deck, black 2.0. Okay, so both of these players are going to dive into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two. And let's see if Simon can make a comeback here. Make it into 1-1. Or is Rodolfe going to steal, well, not steal this match, win this match by making it 2-0 in this second game. We're just going to have to wait and see Simon, I believe. Yeah, he's probably going to be on the play since he lost. So we're going to see what he's going to do here. 
is he going to keep this hand? Yeah, I guess he is. There is a basic swamp passing turn here. There is Batlands into Dark Ritual, into Hypnotic Specter, turn one, the classic play. And can Simon find a Swords to Plows here? That's going to be very important here at this stage. And he, yes, he can. I'm actually kind of happy for it. Uh, because that means that we get to see some more magic. I think if you're having to battle a turn one hippie and you can't get rid of it, it's going to be a very difficult game for you. Simon here going to his uh, third turn. And actually, he cannot find a land. He just passed turn. Wow, Simon cannot find his third land. There we see if not Expector number two from Rodolfo, uh, Rodolfe. And this is going to be really, really difficult. Oh, no, he's going to take damage to lose a card. So despite that quick sorts to Plausius, that was, of course, the perfect answer. Now he has to face a second Hypnotic Spectre, and he's actually losing a Disenchant. That's probably one of the one of the few cards he can play with two mana. Wow, and it's, 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 okay, there's a, there's a Black Knight. I wanted to say, is he now going to play out an Icy Manipulator to rub salt in the wounds? But I guess he's not doing that. But maybe a Black Knight's even better at, at this stage. There's a Paralyze, another nice weapon against the Black Knight. Of course, he's going to play it on the Hypnotic Spectre in this uh, particular case. And that means that uh, Rodol R Rodolfe will have to pay four to untap it. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to attack again for four. Simon will have to discard one of his cards. And it's not looking good for the Belgian player. Remember, he's already down a game. He's, if he's going to lose this, it's all over. So stuck on 14. Drawing another card. What is he going to do here? Tapping two. Uh, he just has to do that. This is pure desperation mode of Simon here. He has to do this. Remember, the uh, animated Hypnotic Spectre is now also a 1-2 because of the animate that it gives it minus 1, minus 0. Has to chump block the Hypnotic Spectre. And this is just getting painful. At least he's finding another card now. Another Planes has to pass turn. Maybe, maybe, gonna go to eight, gonna have to discard again. Maybe he can find land number four and have a Wrath of God in hand, maybe? That's a possible scenario. Oh man, I see Manipulator gone. Drawing a card here. I just wanted to say if uh, if Rodolfe is finding a Gloom, that would be deadly. Oh, there we see Wrath of God. That's what I'm talking about. So Simon, I guess, is kind of coming back into this game with this Wrath of God. Let's see what the Frenchman can do against his wrath. <laughs> Regrowth if not expector. Oh, that is such a nice answer. And that means more trouble for Simon here, who's already on eight measly life. What can he do? Tapping four here. Another wrath of God. Okay, but now just not as impressive. But you have to do what you have to do. Taking care of the hypnotic specter for a second time. There is an Icy Manipulator with the Royal Assassin. The combo is on the table again. And it has just been control and pressure from, uh, from the French player from the get-go. What can Simon do here? Tapping two more. There's a Disenchant. That's actually pretty good. Can he play another? No, he can't. He's got, only got two cards in hand. Probably going to take a damage here from the Royal. Going to drop to seven. What are we going to see here? There, oh man, this is brutal mind twist, brutal. You can kind of see Simon putting those cards on the table like, okay, you know what, you can have it. This is just end of the road here. There we see a Sengir vampire, and of course the Sengir is going to get eaten, but it's going to buy Simon a little bit of time at least. And there we see the nice combo. I see Manipulator tapping down the Sengir and then using the Royal Assassin. And there's an Hypnotic Spectre, 2-2 two -two Flyer. And look at the card count of Simon. He has no cards in hand. First having to deal with the Hypnotic Spectre and then having to deal with uh, a Mind Twist. And okay, he's on six here. And he's playing another Sengir Vampire. 
And what he can do now, he can tap down the Sengir, and he's actually going to attack with two. He's not going to kill the Sengir. Has to discard the Royal Assassin. He's going to drop to three. Another Icy Manipulator, full control. Yeah, there's really no way that, that Simon can bounce back from this. Oh, it's... <laughs> Oh, this is insane. C.O.P. Black. I thought we were done, but now there's a circle of protection black. And this is a huge problem for Rodolfo because, or Rodolfo, because I think he has no enchantment removal. He has no artifact removal. This C.O.P. Black is here to stay. And is, is a scenario unfolding here where Simon will go come back from three life and no cards in hand and his opponent being on 22 to actually winning this game? I, I, I can't really imagine that happening. On the other hand, I don't think that the Frenchman has any enchantment removal in his deck. Or did he play with Tranquilities in the sideboard? Maybe. And you can see Simon thinking, now, am I going to attack? If I attack, he's going to... Kill the Royal, or kill the Sengir. If I don't attack, he's going to do it anyway. There we see another land from Simon emptying his hand once again and passing turn here. This is so interesting. I thought Simon was dead for sure, but now with the COP Black, I'm not sure about anything anymore. Demonic Tutor. I mean, things keep looking up for Simon. If, if I was him, I think I would... I guess maybe look up a jam day tome. You kind of draw your way back into it. On the other hand, jam day tomes do take a lot of mana, and what he needs is he needs to keep his mana up to use his COP black. What is he going to choose here? I, I maybe Simon doesn't even know. He's just, he's going through his deck thinking, hey, what am I going to pick? Very, very interesting. Very interesting game. That Circle of Protection Black changed everything. We saw that very slow start of Simon where he was stumbling on lands. He couldn't find a land drop after land number two. He had to face Hypnotic Spectre, just discarding his hand, slowly getting a lot of card, card disadvantage going. And there we do see a Sword Supply here. So I guess he looked up a Swords. That makes sense. Taking care of the Royal Assassin. And, uh, and then, you know, when already Simon was down on the ground, we saw that mind twist. And then I thought, okay, now he's dead for sure. But then he top decked that COP black. And this is really a, a, a problem for the Frenchman. What can he do? And maybe they're discussing this now as well. What can I do? There is a Black Knight. And actually, Black Knight works... COP Black works against the Black Knight because it prevents the damage dealt by the Black Knight and it doesn't target the Knight. And look at this. This is interesting. Now we see uh, Rodolfe using a new strategy, tapping down the Lance of Simon with the Icy Manipulator. Oh, here we see the Demonic Hordes that I talked about. This is sweet, the Demonic Hordes. And the cool thing here is what he can start doing with the Demonic Hordes. He can start eating away Simon's land base. And once he has eaten enough lands, he can actually start dealing damage to Simon. So this is great. Another um, a great card for uh, Rodolfe would be uh, Gloom. You know, Gloom is going to make it very expensive for Simon to activate his COP Black. There is an Hypnotic Spectre, and this again is just going to buy him time. He's just playing out these cards, hoping that his opponent will use an Icy Manipulator activation on the Hypnotic Spectre. I don't, I don't see him doing that, by the way. And paying the three for Demonic Hordes, eating away a land. And now he can actually get some damage in. Of course, he's going to destroy an untapped land. And he's going to pump the mana into his COP black. And that actually works as well. I mean, COP is really, really strong. It's really difficult to deal with. But not impossible, especially with the Demonic Hordes in play, where you can just snack away all the lands of Simon. And Simon now really needs to find a Swords to Plowseers. 
He needs the swords to take care of the demonic hordes. Looks like these players are looking something up. What? I'm not sure. But he's now just passing turn. What can these players do? I really enjoy seeing this uh, demonic hordes. Probably just going to eat another land, right? Eating one of the swamps away. And we're really here in this weird situation that you sometimes see with magic where both players are kind of stuck tapping down two lands again. And it's really hard for Simon as well to play out anything because everything he wants to play out is taking lands and he needs his lands for his COP black because he's on three. And I mean, I think I, I cannot really see Simon winning this one. That's close to impossible. But then again, I also thought Simon would be dead a long, long time ago, and then he top decked that COP black. Looks like he's passing again. And that's good news for Rodolfe and bad news for Simon. Paying the cost with the demonic courts again. Those are that uh, three black mana that you see being tapped during the upkeep every time. And look at this. Now he can really start doing some business. Oh, but Simon's finding another land, so he's slowing it down <laughs> for a whole turn. Oh, man. These are one of the rare moments where actually an install energy would be really useful. Again, playing, uh, paying the three black for the upkeep cost, destroying another land, only two untapped lands for Simon left. And it's just a matter of time. Untapping everything. And now he can tap down. Uh, he can, of course, in response. And destroying another land. And there is a Sengir Vampire. Yeah, next turn it's pretty much over, right? There's not much that he can do. Tapping both lands again. And this is this it? Yeah, man, this is it. Wow, a win by the beautiful, beautiful Demonic Hordes. Uh, this was a great, great game to look at. Well, actually, it wasn't a great game to look at, but the fact that the Demonic Hordes was a decider, for me, that makes the game, that makes the whole match. I would like to thank both players for sharing your action right here on Timmy Talks. I'd like to thank Richard for organizing these cool events that allow me to show these rare decks in action and all these weird situations happening. I mean, demonic hordes destroying lands to kind of get under a COP black. That's just hilarious. Thank you very much for bringing those decks to the tables. And of course, thank you for watching another episode on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like to support the channel, it's quite simple. You can leave a like, leave a comment, share it on your socials, become a subscriber if you're not a sub yet. And what you can also do is you can become a patron of Timmy Talks on our Patreon page. There's probably a link popping up right now. Click on that link that will take you to Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can check out how you can support Timmy Talks, how you can join our Discord server and join all sorts of events. So if you like that, have a look at Timmy Talks on Patreon. Talking about that, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.